copyright law firm prosecuting the case, willing to spend over a million dollars in legal fees, ever settle for a publicly disclosed $15,000. Sometimes you'll, they'll demand that these settlements be held secret or be held confidential, uh, or and so people infer these huge settlements that didn't happen. Here, you, you almost never see this outcome. And this outcome is only because of your willingness and your audience's willingness to support you and to back your defense. And because of that, it changed. It's the number one thing they have underestimated in the various people that have come after you, either politically or in the legal arena or elsewhere, is that they underestimate your audience. They underestimate your audience's commitment. They, under, they underestimate your audience's intelligence. They underestimate your audience's willingness to support and back each other and you by what they do financially and otherwise. They assume that they could come out. You just said it. Benjamin Franklin said, hang together, hang separate. We've got the real Americana audience, and the tougher it gets, the more they're in there. And as long as we don't back down, they back us. They've been, they've been so pissed a few years ago, but I thought I was just saying apology so I get left alone. I didn't get that it was the setup. My audience got it. They were pissed at me. Well, now I get it. Hey, audience, I'm not just physically not surrendering. In, in death before dishonor, I get what you, you're right. We're going to raging bull, not back down to anything. And, and that's better. I don't, I don't have to even think things through now. I can just go with my instincts, be a raging bull, and it seems like that's the best way to go. Absolutely. This, outcome, this is one of the most extraordinary outcomes ever. I, I, I'm, I'm writing a book called Underdog, Great Underdog Test Cases in the Law. And this will be one of those cases. And so you have a right as a firm, a small firm against a big power, all the political media. Is it Wilmer Hale the biggest in the country? It's one of the biggest. It goes back and forth between them and Big McKenzie and Tiad Narms and a few others. Uh, but one of the most powerful, I mean, they are Twitter. this potential trial. That's how much money they already spent on the case. The, and they spent hundreds and hundreds of hours on the case. So you're talking about this massive effort to crush you. And because your audience put up that final wall, that last wall, that real wall, they were unable to reach that wall. And when they realized it, they waved the white flag and said bye-bye. And nobody else is going to be uh, willing to come. Uh, no competent, intelligent lawyer or other people are going to look at this, political people are going to look at this and say, this is a smart strategy. This audience is much stronger than we thought, much smarter than we thought, much more willing to fight than we thought. Well, I keep wondering why over the last four or five years, <coughs> always the exact amount of money we need comes in to keep operating. Why is it always the exact amount? And, why, and it's, it's like God's literally telling me, I'm in control, you're in my hands. This has been an amazing time. Uh, Rondazzi, you want to add the other comments to this? I just uh, I have a very big feeling of satisfaction when they put as many lawyers on the other side of the table as I have in my entire firm, and uh, and then they squeak out the door with a you know essentially it was like you flipped a coin to them and said here get out of my way go go buy yourself an ice cream. 
Well, compared to what the costs are, it's, it's true. I, I just, it's the hysteria. I was in a Mexican food restaurant Saturday night, and I was shaking hands, doing autographs with most people in there, and I walked out. This guy goes, F you. And I didn't turn around. And he goes, F your family. And I shouldn't have done it. I leaned in toward him. I said, come outside. And then he wouldn't get up. And his buddy said, I'll kick your ass. I said, both of you, let's go. And then he wouldn't get up. shaking. And I said, man, I'm not the toughest guy around, dude, but you literally said, F my family. Your mouth needs to stop writing checks you can't cash. But that's this modern world. These guys, they think it's all like posing. They don't get it's the real world. And I think that's with the Hillary worshipers and the rest of them. They don't get that it's coming to rubber meets the road. And there are a lot of people in this world aren't backing down, aren't giving in. And we've got the audience of activists that have got the big brass wavos. And we, we don't just thank them. I worship God, number one. But I tell you, our audience... <laughs> When you're like a raft floating on the ocean, man, you love that raft. I love you guys. I really appreciate you. And you two, both of you men did a great job. Let's briefly talk about the New York Times cover story declaring the next phase of the attack on the First Amendment. Live, raw, and unfiltered, and powered by a search for the truth. Doesn't mean we don't make mistakes, but my God, only a few percentage points out of 100. I wish I was wrong. Uh, finishing up here with constitutional lawyers and First Amendment lawyers and all around whiz kids, uh, Bob Barnes and Mark Rendazzo. Uh, cover page of the New York Times admitting that they plan to take the even mainline gay liberals off the internet uh, who don't support censorship of conservatives claiming we're all dangerous brainwashers. They've got me right there front and center, Paul Watson front and center. Mark, you want to take this first? I mean, this is just getting insane. Trump's got to act on this. Well, you know, I, I'm sorry, but I don't think he's going to. Uh, I mean, he's had... He's had uh, command of the antitrust division of the Department of Justice for three years. He's done nothing about online censorship. I mean, 